Yeah, so uh, hello everybody from my side. Um, as Søren said, Thomas Fiedler from SAP, product owner of the ABAP development tools. And uh, yeah, I've already seen that uh, my title currently or the, the topic of today is a very long title, develop cloud ready custom code with embedded steampunk on premise or in short uh, ABAP cloud. Reason for that is, um, yeah, my proposal for this talk was already uh, weeks back. So we had this new nice name, this new brand for the ABAP um, since the um, tech it this year. So just remember my talk here is about ABAP cloud. Uh, I think uh, you've seen this already this morning in the uh, keynote by Frank's demo. So the ABAP cloud, this is not a new thing. It is available in Steampunks already since years now. So all the steampunk projects they're using already uh, about cloud and uh, yeah then the, the, the next step let's say was the announcement that you can use this uh, our cloud as well in the s hana public cloud so um, in the past you could also you could only use the uh, key user tools but now you can also use adt with the ABAP cloud also to extend the s hana public cloud solutions and then the yeah, next natural step was as well as we, you know, we are, our slogan more or less is uh, cloud first, but not cloud only. So did we also say, uh, why not provide this new approach as well for our on-premise customers? And this is what is talked about today um, that I want to show you a little bit how these new capabilities can be used uh, in an on-premise system. When I talk about new capabilities, what is essential uh, for the ABAP cloud is first one is released APIs. So we now have really APIs that you should use in your extensions, in your custom code. And when I say release APIs, I don't mean that small uh, checkbox in the uh, SE 37 in the function editor. No, it's a completely new concept. You will see this later on how this, um, uh, where you, how you get this in the in the IDE. That's the first topic. And the second topic is the uh, ABAP language version. So um, something that you can really use to specify on uh, ABAP development objects that you really want to use this strict mode of just using or that is only allowed to use these re released APIs. So this is uh, one aspect and the other aspect was already mentioned also uh, this morning that we also um, restricted a little bit the other language. So old statements will be not available anymore. And yeah, now it's really getting hard for Tobias because also macros are not possible anymore. So this is also not allowed. So you will get syntax errors when you use these things. So what does this API mean? So Essentially, there are two flavors of APIs. One are the, say, classic ABAP objects, APIs, classes, interfaces um, to interact with the real services of the ABAP platform. So number ranges, application jobs, or, or APIs to generate development objects, all these kinds of things. They are available via standard ABAP objects. Um, op classes, interfaces. And then on the other hand side, we have the access to the application objects, to the business objects of the S4 stack. So the sales orders, the business partners and all these kinds of things. And this is provided via a CDS view for read use cases and um, yeah, wrap business objects. So behavior definitions for the, um, uh, for the change of the, uh, these objects. And as I said, I want to show this now in a small uh, or in a yeah, demo that I have prepared uh, for that. So you already see the development environment of choice for that is for sure uh, the other development tools in Eclipse. Um, I already have prepared a connection to a system. So first of all, I have to say there is nothing special concerning ABAP Cloud uh, and Eclipse so the full scope of ABAP and Eclipse uh, is available. So you're just connecting to your on-premise system uh, via an ABAP project, enter the credentials and you can directly start working. As uh, Boris mentioned already in the morning, uh, this ABAP cloud is available since S4HANA 2022 release. So therefore I've prepared a fresh system, uh, 2020 release SP0 and uh, hope that everything uh, works fine in the demo. 
what I want to start is to have a small look on these APIs that we are providing. For that, I have here a small example. This is a CDS view. You can already get what guess what this is behind. So it's the uh, view for the unit of measures. And you see already that, yeah, I think most of you know it already, but CDS plays really a major role in this ABAP cloud because with CDS, you really define or redefined the complete data model um, of the S4 stack. So we call it also the virtual data model. So this is really the access point to all the objects, to the business objects of the S4 stack. A little bit better to understand is when you're using the element info, because then you see it in a little bit more tabular um, approach. Um, you also see all the objects, the, the columns, the fields that are available, the component types behind that. And you also see the associations. And then you see already what are the benefits of this. So it's really a model. So you can navigate through the model. You can use the association to navigate to the text, for example, of that one. So it's also possible here to navigate through this. So it's really like a, a browser for the development objects, let's say, in that's, that sense. You can also jump back, all these things. What you can also do, for sure, you want to see the data of that. Just press F8 and then you're directly in the data browser and you can browse through the through the objects here. So all the basic stuff that you maybe already know from your developments in ADT, they are still valid in the other cloud. So there's no, no special flavor of ADT or something like that. So we are providing the same tools here to navigate through the models and display the data. What is new now is this release concept. This you see here on the properties tab where you typically have informations like what's the package, who's the owner of that object, and there is a new tab, this is this API state. And here you see already that this uh, CDS view, this is release one. That means you can use it in our cloud. It's, re it's released for the cloud development, so all the things that you're doing in ADT, and it's also available for the key user apps. That means when you're using the key, key user uh, tooling, you can also use this view in order to extend the applications via the key user tool. So this is the first thing which is essential. So that means you can use this view in your other developments. Good. Now, typically, you do not know these new things because you're more coming from the ERP world. You know all the... Um, objects that are available there and there for sure you know uh, that um, yeah when i opened the t 006 table then you know okay in that table there were the unit of measures and now you can ask yourself okay how do I, do i get this relationship to these new objects and this find this you find information also on the properties tab on the api state because this object is not released but you directly see here what is the successor of that. That means whenever you know some database tables from, from your developments uh, in, the, in the past, you directly see here what is the release API that you can use in order to fulfill the same requirements. So this is also very essential to know this here. For sure, you can also then directly navigate from here to open again this uh, view here. Okay, this was the next one. Now, typically what you want to do first is you want to get an overview, okay, what, what APIs are available in the system? What, what can I use here? And therefore we have the uh, search capability. So when I open the ABAP object, object search here, so this is also a new feature in ADT. So the search was there already since years, but um, we, um, we renovate uh, did this a little bit. And there you have the property filter. And the property filter means you can now filter for the use for the uh, released APIs. So in that case, I only want to see the APIs that I can um, use um, in cloud developments. And I also want to restrict uh, the type so that I do not see all objects. I only want to see the uh, CDS views. And you say search, and then you directly see the results in the search view here. So this is all the, the objects, so more than 1,000. I'm not sure how many it is exactly, but there are thousands of CDS view that are released that you can use uh, in your developments. So this is the, the, the first uh, thing that you can use to get an overview. The second one is also <clears throat> you can use the uh, quick 
quick search. So control shift A dialog. So this is one of the, I think, most important uh, shortcuts at all to quickly open an object <clears throat> in the IDE. And here I can do the same. I can also say, okay, let's filter uh, to only the API that are available in the cloud. And in that sense, I well, let, let's let's do it like this. I really want to see all the objects, but I don't want to see the objects here because I want to see them permanently in my IDE. And therefore, I can click this button here, and then I can create out of this search um, pattern, let's say, a so-called repository tree. Now, this is now also an additional configuration capability. Okay, let's throw this away. That's good. Um, <clears throat> here, for example, you can give it a name like released AP. oh, APIs. And you can also configure the tree a little bit. For example, in that case, I want to see the application components that I know in which area these APIs are available. And I can also group it for the object type say finish or I don't want to take this into account in the uh, link with editor and then you see it here on the left hand side what's happening this tree comes up here and it's now permanently integrated in my um, repository tree here and it takes a while so you see all the uh, application components financials logistics also the the basis components are available here and then you can uh, navigate through it um, just open an arbitrary folder here. And then you see which objects are available here. So again, a bunch of uh, CDS use available in that area as well. So I think this gives you already a very good overview what APIs um, are available here in that um, in that system here. Okay, what, what does this released API really mean? So release, okay, it's clear you can use it or you should use it in your developments, but it's also such kind of a um, stability contract behind that. That means we will never do some kind of incompatible changes on that. So I think you notice when you're just using one object that you find in the, in the dictionary, you cannot be sure that there will be no changes. And this is now really um, uh, safe here. So no incompatible changes from our end. And in case there is an incompatible change planned, then we're going through a deprecation uh, um, process. That means I have here one, so maybe some object which was already released in the past, which now was replaced with a better one. So re replaced really means um, that the old object is replaced or deprecated and that a successor is defined. So it's not that this view is not available anymore or that you cannot use it anymore. It's just that there is a better choice for you. So you should move to the new one, but you can still use the old one. So there will be no syntax error, things like that. So you can still use the old one, but for sure you can be sure that there will be no new features uh, on, the, on the old one. Good, this was the deprecation concept. Now I think we have all the puzzles together, so we know how we can um, yeah, uh, search through the repository, you can display the, um, the APIs. And now comes the next step. This is about how can I use the, um, these APIs now in my ABAP code. And therefore, I already have prepared a small demo here. And yeah, typically, so this just, uh, as an example, I get the, um, the data from this T006 table where the unit of measures are stored. And in that case, I yeah, now want to really use the new capabilities. And for that, I also go into the properties view of that class. And then I see on the general um, tab here that I can change now the ABAP language version. So standard ABAP means the ABAP that you know from your past developments, and now I can change it with this small pop-up here, I can switch it to ABAP for cloud development. And then you see what's immediately happening. I get syntax errors because you know already, not all statements are allowed. Move statement, old statement, you cannot use it. And also the database tables are not allowed to use. So you, do you directly see in that syntax error what the successor of that is? So the unit of measure is already mentioned here in the syntax check. So that what you have to do is just 
change here for sure using the uh, code completion. In that case, I can also use the uh, search here in the, I still want to select the ISO code. And here I use the uh, of measure, ah, sorry for that. And then this syntax, uh, syntax is okay. This I also uh, change manually. And then the change is gone. So I can activate this. Yes, save it. Activate it. So this was now um, how you can use the uh, the things statically. Why is the okay? Um, and uh, here I also have prepared um, uh, a uh, dynamical statement. So because you can think, ah, maybe I can cheat a little bit and I call all the APIs now uh, in a dynamic way. But when you're executing this here via F9, you will see that an ABAP dump will occur. So also no possibility to use these things uh, or the old AP, the old database tables directly via a, a dynamic SQL. So this is also not possible. Okay, coming back, you maybe saw a little bit, okay, um, this does not make so much uh, fun here to replace all these statements here, move statements and all the other statements which are not allowed anymore. Um, so for that, we have some um, other um, um, support here in the IDE. So this is the, the, the same example as before. So with the old statement here. And now I want to use the, the ABAP test cockpit um, in that sense to check the class. So I right click here, run as the ABAP test cockpit. I already have prepared a variant here. So this for the ABAP conf variant where the so-called cloud readiness checks are available. Maybe I can show this shortly in the variant editor. So this is the new ATC variant editor. And then I have uh, basically two checks in there. One is this language version check, which exactly uh, checks that only the new syntax uh, is used, so not the obsolete statements. And the another one is uh, that I check for the usage of the released API. So this is what's happening here. Going back to my code and large is a little bit and then you see already okay I um, extended a little bit this class so there are more findings in it I mark all these findings right click and then I see here I have the quick fixes quick fixes is really a very cool features because this helps me a lot in this automated um, um, adjustment of the code so it's more or less similar the approach that we've already seen in the talk by Lawrence this morning um, so here you see all the findings again, and also uh, a list of uh, where we uh, get support for the quick fixes. Again, the class can put it into a transport request. And here you see a small uh, summary or an outlook, what will be changed by the tool. So here, for example, the in the, in the select area, in the SQL area, we're only supporting the new SQL syntax. So this is adjusted automatically. And um, yeah, also some um, things like this describe table. So this is also be replaced by new ABAP statements or all these kind of things. So this is done completely automatically by the tool. So you do not have to change this manually by your own. So this is all part of the quick fixes, just press finish. And then you see that all these changes are automatically applied um, to your source code here. So very, very easy, just integrated in the IDE. So for all of you who already did a S4 conversion, you know already the quick fixes from the S4 world. That's the exactly the same approach here, but now with um, quick fixes for adapting the ABAP uh, cloud approach. Okay, so we do not offer this uh, ABAP language version for sources. We also have it for other objects. For example, here I have a, a database table. And I have the same capabilities here as well. Also in the properties view, I can change also here the language version um, to ABAP for cloud development, select. In that case I have to say first, 
And then you also see that you will get a syntax error here because I'm using a data element here in my table, which is not released. Also the same uh, for CDS views. Here I have um, replic uh, uh, created a view based on the Mara table, where you already know that this is not available uh, or accessible. So here, exactly the same. You just click here, change the language version, and then also you get here syntax error in the CDS error. So this was more or less how you can use the language version. So you see already, this is a very selective approach. That means you can do this individually on every object. So you say, oh, this class, I want to migrate. Other classes, I still want to use macros, for example. Then you uh, don't change the language version. But sometimes you also have a new project. You say, oh, in that new project, I want to use the ABAP Cloud approach completely. So that means for all objects. And then it's a little bit cumbersome to maintain all the language versions manually uh, in the editor after creating, after creating an object. And therefore we have something um, 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 in, in addition here in, in, in our tool set, I call it the, the, the next level. So level two, where you really can specify that I completely want to use the new approach here. And this I have prepared already here in that um, package here. So this is my uh, cloud development project uh, package. And when you cl click on it, the package editor opens up. And then you see already that I have specified the language version already on package level. So also here, this option is available. Then I say, OK, in this package, I only want to use ABAP Cloud. And I have did this a little bit more restrictive because I also created a software component before and also the software component is classified as ABAP for cloud. That means also when you're now creating new packages that already this per default, this ABAP for cloud development is defined. And you will see this when I now, for example, create here a new object or new class, for example, a new ABAP class. Oh, I'll just use this one here. Say finish. And when you then look in the properties view, you see that this ABAP for cloud development is already specified. There is no possibility to change it because you want to enforce this um, in your developments. And this is, um, yeah, let's say, the next level. So you can really assure that all objects uh, within these packages are already created with that, with that new approach here. I think very, very good stuff here. And then for sure, same, same things apply. Only new ABAP syntax can be used and only released APIs can be used. OK, this was it now for the uh, 2020 to release. Now, sometimes I get questions, oh, Thomas, what a pity we only have an old s system, but I like this approach very much. Is there a possibility that I can use this already in my 21 release, for example? And the answer is, yes, this is possible. So when you're, what do we have here? I go back to that here. And I now um, have prepared the same class on an s release 2021. Um, I open this, open, uh, not this I don't want to open, open it in that project. So that you see this is now an S4 2021 release. And there I have exactly the same capabilities. So for example, I also can use the uh, ABAP test cock. bit here with this already predefined uh, uh, variant here and actually okay. and then you see you just get exactly the same uh, errors um, that you get here also that the unit of measure t006 is not usable and also with the information that this view needs to be used there's for sure some limitations because um, you officially support this only with the 2022 release, but most of the things that I showed in that demo are also available on older releases. For sure, we have limitations concerning some of the features. So, for example, this uh, language version for dictionary objects is not available on older releases, and for sure not all APIs are available, because most of the APIs, they are first released with the 22 release, but as said, you can already start using it, get familiar with the concept of the ABAP cloud. This is already possible on the 
older releases at well for sure not on all, re all releases so when you want to do this um, on a 740 system you will uh, get will not get uh, this information for sure but um, yeah for um, for the most um, for the 22 21 20 releases parts of these things are already available and you can use it in case you want to um, um, figure out these capabilities already on older releases, so 740, where you cannot really use this new concept, but you can already analyze your custom code. And therefore, we have the custom code migration app. Maybe you know this already as well from the S4 projects. And there is now a new flavor available where you can also check the ABAP code concerning this cloud readiness. And in that case, you can really check your coding also on 740 systems or even older systems just to get, let's get an, an impression about the, um, the efforts that you have to do in order to adapt later on when you're moving to S4HANA, for example, that system, what are the efforts here? And they're exactly the same checks uh, um, applies here. So I also have here uh, the objects and I see exactly the same information here. Also language version check and also the check for the released API. So this is also some uh, possibilities here to already analyze older systems with this new approach of the other language version. And having said that, I think I'm already at the end of today. And I will then hand over back to Søren. Thank you, Thomas. Great one. Mm. I like it every time uh, if you say uh, an old release in S4HANA 2021 in one sentence. <laughs> I, I think also Tobias loves this. <laughs> you have to talk, Thomas. You really have to talk. <laughs> yeah, uh, Tobias, why is your the release you're using still supported? <laughs> That's a big problem. <laughs> I'm just thinking about the, the people that actually on EHP 5, which is also part of this extended maintenance until 2030. Yeah, they have CDS yeah. to use. Yeah. They're on, uh, on above 740. I don't, I'm not sure. Is it only 740 or still 773? So I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. EH, EHP 6 is. Uh, initially shipped with uh, 740 and EHP 5 is shipped with 731 and can be upgraded to 740. I so I think. Uh, but but let, let's start with a small question. <laughs> Actually, we still we have uh, to one minute to to Thomas. It actually popped up uh, in the chat several times also in the morning or throughout the day. And that's actually uh, with all these APIs, where do people actually a, find what is now available as an API? And B, if something is missing, uh, how to get this into the SAP standard? Yeah, so uh, first of all, the APIs are all available on the API hub. So when you do not have access to the system, you can also browse through the API hub. So that means there are also the, um, release bodies, the release CDS views, release the business objects, all these kinds of things are available as well on the API hub. And there is also a uh, process via the customer influence channel. So there's an own channel for APIs that you can use to also request APIs. But they are and, then uh, the newest releases. And have a, how about other uh, questions about the shipping to APIs? So people actually requesting one, how long do you think it will take for a reasonable request? And is it like we are now on the 2022 release and will be shipped with the next release only or are all the down ports maybe available? Yeah, this depends a little bit. So um, as you have seen, most of the APIs are already available on the, from my end, older releases. <laughs> 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 so when it is just about uh, setting the release flag, then for sure we can uh, think about also downporting that. When it is about, for example, we are creating a new uh, RAP business object uh, with access to completely new objects, uh, most likely this will be not downported. 
So this will then come with the next release. Okay, so the answer basically is uh, reach out to SAP. You do not have to actually reach out to your uh, sales uh, executive. You can actually reach out directly to the people that are going to develop the uh, API via the customer influence channel. That one is uh, open for everybody with an S user, correct? Correct, yes. yes. Yeah. I think so. If you have a P user, uh, you you can you can only read. So you need an S user. Need to be a customer, yeah. and uh, yeah, people or the but, is it people but, take a look at it and to ship it somehow. But uh, trick Zipson, if you create a uh, free tier account, then you also have an S user as a private person, and can. <laughs> no, in, in that can case, you actually custom. Yeah. Huh? In that case, you, you automatically get transformed into yeah. a customer because the concept of a uh, private person simply uh, accessing services from SAP didn't really made it into the concept of a free tier. So, yeah, right. thank you. You're welcome. The